Um, and then I did check. There are no separate sewers there. Everything is come up. Okay, so so if we stay on man-made surfaces or impervious surfaces, we won't be draining into uh, water. I think, well, and I think with that piece, you know, I don't want to speak on behalf of the Conservation Committee, but Henry, I don't know if you would mind speaking, you know, knowing that, like, you're a member of the Conservation Committee, yeah. do, do you feel comfortable speaking as far as, uh, you know, as a Conservation Committee member, how you feel about that, or Donna, I know you're in, on, in attendance, either of you care to speak on that? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think as long as it's going into the river, I don't think it's a big a problem with that. Okay. But it, you have to be absolutely certain on that. Though. You don't want to find out later. Yeah. Don, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I, you know, as long as it's not going directly into the river and if there's a filter or something yeah. over that area. I never, um, yeah. in our snow meeting that we had, Josh, you, um, Leanne, yeah. Joel, when we had our meeting, you were uh, you were beamed in, and when you had suggested the high school, the no, that was right. No, no, you made some suggestions, but I remember you saying that that parking lot was not part of the combined sewer, so it wasn't an option. But as as you're saying now, it is. Land. Yeah, I think that's the difference. That it's important for us to specify. It sounds like if it was put on the land. The land is that was part of the river, but if it's on the surface lot, that's part of the mine. So yeah, mm -hmm. and so well, the land is just like what's the drive? Yeah, you wouldn't want to put on the land anyway for all the reasons nobody else wants to. I have I have follow up question that first. Um, when we went through the entire two years of Wilson Drive committee meetings, and I, I sat on the public works at the time, and also when it was, whatever committees it was on, I was on. We even mapped out how much space on Wilson we were going to be able to store snow on. Not that, that that's my preference, but what wasn't bioswales so that we could continue, if needed, to dump some of the snow there. So I, this is just a completely new information for me in our second discussion at the board level here on snow dumping. So I just wanted to make that clear, that this is the first time I've heard we can't dump any snow there. Um, secondly... It's, I'm sorry, was that... What was that? Well, well, she's just saying this, this next year. Yeah, 2018 and 19. Yeah, I just never had heard that at all. Yeah, no, that was never. Okay. That Wilson can't be. Okay. That we can't put any snow there. So if we, so that option of we can't put all the snow there. We can, but there's like there's only a very high consequence. There's a very negative consequence, and that has, I was I'm sorry to interrupt, but I had recollected that you know keeping in mind that there would be. Um, new uh, vegetation. Let me, let me clarify, because um, if we're talking about dumping on Menlo and dumping, you know, like we've had these spread the snow out, well, you know, I never heard that spreading the snow out didn't include Wilson in 2018 or 19. I, that in our memo, is there something that said that? So anyways, I just wanted to clarify that. I do understand that there'd be some space the following year as of today. Is that correct? In 2020? Can you make this a one year? We can do it in one year. Okay. Um, my next one, I just had three as you guys were talking, was a resident that I had spoken to, actually it was a business improvement district board member. Um, I don't use the river park lots, so I don't understand, and that's why I'm just throwing it out there, because I don't know what this means. But switching where the, the, the recreation users park, um, they, you know, a couple of the bid board members thought that would, and little league coaches and things like that, that the, the configuration right now and the, the lots we have to choose, we may want to consider that. So I don't know what I'm talking about, but I wanted to pass <laughs> that along. I'm aware of that. I think that would come up in our parking discussion in 2019. But it would have to do with where the store would be. If we right, right. those lots, right? Right. So okay. like C actually wouldn't affect the little leaf. Okay. Okay, thank you. I didn't. I just wanted to pass it along. The, and I have two more. Um, I we've switched the conversation from last time, so I just want to make sure everyone's comfortable. I am not in favor of moving all the snow um, out of the business district because, of, which we're not talking about yet tonight. We're just talking about moving all of it. Um, the residents don't get 
their snow moved. They, you know, from what I understand, and if I'm wrong, please correct me. And the business, I'm, I'm a big proponent as a business owner that if I'm benefiting directly, our finance director always says, you want, to, you want the user, we're trying to match our expenditure and revenues. And if, the, if it was detrimental, I'm, you know, clear the corners. But if it's not, like, then if it gets to be too bad, then the business improvement district is there for a reason. I mean, they special assess themselves, which a homeowner association can do. If the residents wanted to move the snow for any reason, they, the homeowners association would, could get together and you would pay for that. So I just, I want them to throw that out there that I am certainly not in favor of moving all the snow um, option. I would like to leave all or some in the business district and if the businesses, um, if there's a safety concern, that I want to hear tonight, but other than that, um, which I haven't heard too much of yet. And then my fourth thing was, regardless of what's decided tonight, I would like a soil study. Um, it came up last time from the Conservation Committee as a request, um, and that the soil study was more of what we use for gardens. And I just feel like, in the end, it, it would be beneficial just to know the impact of, of contamination from, from oil and other things other than salt on that. Even if we decide to put the snow yeah. on a paved surface and not a yeah, because um, I think in the future, I mean, it's just good to know because it, it, we've done it for so many years. We might as well take advantage of this opportunity to know so that if we ever decide to move it, we need that parking lot for something else. Okay. We would have that information. If it's a big cost, you know, I, I would like the board to consider it. But that would yeah. be my. I would well, like to we can do some quick that. analysis to sure. see what the cost would be and. Okay, that was all my questions yep. I had. Um, Trustee Amenta, and then I, I think you had it anyways. Well, I mean, there are people who park there um, in C, and, um, so, and it says in our memo, several people who use this lot live in the nearby apartment buildings, mm -hmm. and I believe there's a pretty large proportion of handicapped individuals who live in those apartment buildings, and uh, I mean, the people I, I notice around the park when I'm in the park are elderly. I don't know if it's Section 8 or what exactly um, the housing for it's some, some type of subsidized housing. So I just, I'm not sure um, if removing the parking closest to that building that's used mostly by the residents of that building is uh, the most, I, I mean, I prefer to use a, a different lot. So, so that we preserve the parking for people who uh, live in that building and may have difficulty with mobility. Historically, that lot was used as overflow parking. Um, historically, I've been involved in the parking for a number of years, um, and, and Diane could definitely speak better to this, but um, historically, that was um, sold as daytime permits or um, for someone who was um, maybe going to go on vacation for a month and needed a place to put their car or things like that. I, I, I don't, I mean, I, I, we could certainly check, but I don't know that the bulk of the permits sold in that lot actually are sold at River Park residents. Historically, that was not the case. Well, it says, it's, well, it said the lot is typically sold out during the school year cycle. Remaining months, the lot is at 95% capacity. Trustee, okay. Unless you're not done. Mm -hmm. I can understand. I think there are a lot of apartment buildings around there, so it's hard to say exactly what apartment buildings they were referring to in, that, in the memo. Um, based on my conversations in the recent years, because of the Little League parking needs, the, I would um, concur. That's my understanding what uh, Leanne said. Safe to say, if you, if you want to hold it until you get a confirmation on who, what residents use that lot, um, that would be valid because it didn't refer to the specific apartment buildings, but it did reference them. Um, but I would, I guess, um, I know that DPW does remove snow from corners of residential areas for site, for safety reasons, similar to the business district. So I think there is kind of a similar practice um, in terms of uh, value. So I am comfortable with the practice that we have now of removing snow from the business district. I don't think, because it's not a bare pavement, um, high level of service, it does seem like it's safety oriented and access oriented. Um, and it's, we could reevaluate it in a year. Um, and it is similar to the residential where it builds up on the corners and we need to move it away so that the 
walkways are clear. Um, I guess I always make a move. Is that correct, Leanne? I just want to verify because I, I could agree with that if that was. Um, oh, yeah, we should verify since the director is here. Yeah, I mean, do, do we clear as much on the corners from residential as we do in the business district, or is it a different level of service? Um, I guess the answer to that is it depends. Um, in some years, it, it really de it depends on the snowfall, it depends on the type of snow. It, and, and I apologize. I'm not. I'm not trying to be cagey or indirect. I just, you know, it, there. There's no absolute answer to that question. It really just depends on the year. Because everything that I've been reading, the reason I asked for clarification was that I've been told up to this meeting that we do more for the business district than we do for the residential street. So it's a change from what I'm understanding. Um, and it would, be, it would affect my decision, that's all I'm saying. I would say in, in probably the past year to two, the service level has been higher to the business district. Um, certainly since we started um, with on-street overnight parking on Oakland and Capitol, um, we've had to pay more attention to um, snow removal in those areas. It's taken a little more time just because we're working around parked vehicles. Um, sometimes we have to go back, you know, it, it's alternate side parking, so we get, you know, one side one night, one side the next. Um, but, you know, I would say in the last 10 years, it, it's probably fairly evenly split. We have had years where we have cleared snow from every radius in every residential neighborhood in the village, and that that is a very high level of service with a lot of you know, a lot of labor hours in and it. And we do that still? I mean, if, if um, still we will. have not right. to that level in the last couple of years. It, it hasn't been necessary. And remember, in the residential areas, we all have parkways where we can store snow, so it doesn't, uh, I don't think it accumulates the same way um, as it would in the business district because there isn't that parkway. It goes right up to the curb in the sidewalk. And so I just think it's, it's a sort of a different need. I think. What I'm, how I'm taking it, and this is very high level, because that's how I think it is, and that's not a judgment, it's more just global, is that we have a DPW level of service that responds to um, snow that's in areas that prevents access to the public in terms of biking, walking, and business. And so I guess, the, so why, where I'm coming from as a um, trustee is saying, Let's keep that level of responsiveness because snow does vary from year to year, and um, and so to make a strict policy decision one way or another seems more disruptive than I think is in our best interest right now. Um, so that's why I would I would authorize to continue the responsiveness to the business district and to residential streets that need it that have impacted in, you know access um, in high snowfalls. And then also to dump snow um, and public lot for business district and public lots to uncomfortable with lot C just based on my knowledge and what we've talked about tonight. It's not an official motion, but no. just to move things along a little bit. I, I would support using River Park, but with some further analysis on specifically how many cars are they all day parking and is there do we where the because the parking lots aren't that far from the River Park complex, so I'm not sure. But think through this disability yeah. pass from one lot, That's and right. maybe they don't need to store the snow right up to Oakland. You know, just mm -hmm. think through it. But somewhere in there, configure it to store snow. Maybe have a, a map for us to look at to see where you would propose to put the snow, yeah. where the inlets are. Yeah. So do you think you wouldn't want to make a, a, a motion to make that? Uh, the engineer said that we, would, we may, to contain the snow, need to extend our catch basins. Is there a fiscal impact to that? Because we're heading into budget. Just to add additional ones? That was an option. Right, it's an option. We don't have to. No, we don't. Somebody's going to be inconvenienced and someone's No, it's okay. Be. We're just heading into budget, so yeah, I do, yeah. it will be a consideration for me. If that's the case, we'll um, flag that right away. But you would be able to provide us with an estimate. Absolutely. Okay. Um, is there enough parking for the parkers 
the people that are currently parking in lot C on the street. Do we, I, was I mean, because if we did half, I'm just assuming if we just cleared the snow from the, that's why this, the first question I asked was how much is, is it just for the village stuff? Because that's a less of an impact onto how many people have to go onto our streets. And I don't know what impact pulling out 50 cars or whatever is there is going to have on the businesses who now need customer parking and they only allow one side of the street. So I am, I do want some data so I understand that. Um, does, do you know, does anyone know, Tyler? Or? Well, this is what I know. I mean, 3,600 cubic feet or cubic yards on Wilson Drive. You have approximately 10,000 cubic yards on parking lot C. So if you use, and that's, that's 3,600 cubic yards in a, a full season, this, you know, you're gonna probably assume that some of that snow may melt in between, you know, snowfalls and that. But let's just play that scenario off for a second. So that's just over a third of, you know, of the potential spaces that would be utilized, right? For all 